Okay, welcome to this quick start video. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the new uh, Aruba CX 9300 switch. So when we're talking about Aruba data center networking solutions, we have a, a rich portfolio. Uh, we've just expanded that with the 9300. But now our, our, our CX data center portfolio really allows us to stretch uh, from you know 10 standard 10 25 gig connected servers all the way up to 400 gig connectivity options really allowing us to scale and opens our scope for the uh, data center solutions um, of course you know when we're talking about data centers we can't forget about Aruba fabric composer this really is our our orchestration engine which helps us actually deploy these data centers in minutes versus hours and then, of course, when we're talking about data centers, we can't forget about the, about the greater HPE, right? So the servers and storage solutions that the greater HP provides, uh, you know, that's our that's what we're doing in the data centers. We're providing connectivity for all of that uh, critical workload. Now, when we're looking at our portfolio, we have a rich portfolio. It stretches from the Aruba CX 6000 uh, and 6100. Uh, you know, high POE, high, uh, high demand in campus environments, all the way up to the data center. Uh, traditionally, the 8000 series, so the 8325 and the 8360. Of course, we've got the CX10K uh, with the firewall functionality built into it. But now on the far right, of course, we've got the Aruba CX9300, which is our first 400 gig model, really helping us stretch our footprint into the data center. Taking a little closer look at this model, uh, this is a, a, a one RU fixed form factor switch. Uh, it's got 32 ports of 400 gig on the front, which today can be split uh, down to 200 gig and 100 gig. Uh, there are two ports of 10 gig uh, also on the front. These are intended for telemetry functionality, but that's not enabled at launch. So uh, stay tuned for more information coming on that. Now this is a Trident 4 ASIC. So this is a 25.6 terabit switching ASIC. And you know, like we would expect in the data center, it comes with uh, redundant fan trays and power supplies, uh, both in front to back and back to front options. In fact, in the lower left, we can, we can see the two bundles uh, for the switch. The first bundle uh, is the front to back bundle. And then in the next bundle is the uh, back to front bundle. And of course, like we would expect on a data center switch, this switch supports the advanced layer three features like OSPF, BGP, BXLAN, VSX for high availability. Uh, it supports high hardware scale up to 1.24 million routes. And of course, it supports uh, uh, lossless networking too for those storage environments also. In fact, taking a, a, you know, a look at the data center use cases, not surprisingly, the CX9300 is largely going to be positioned as a core switch, either in a traditional two-tier data center or as a spine switch in a layer three spine and leaf data center. Uh, that said, uh, there will be use cases where it'll also be deployed as a top of rack switch connecting into high bandwidth uh, server farms. Uh, and also, you know, on the campus side, too, in a large campus uh, environment uh, where we've got lots and lots of closets with 6300, 6200s, lots of PoE, all connecting into aggregator switches, most commonly going to be the 6400. Uh, and now we can really actually scale these campus environments to very large environments, thanks to this uh, core 9300, which could be used as a, a core to all those uh, and providing connectivity to all those aggregation switches. Um, and, you know, I wanted to give you a, a summary slide on the uh, 9300, you know, the features uh, and functionality within this switch uh, support VXLAN EVPN, layer two, layer three DCI, of course, VSX, uh, you know, VSX solutions for high availability. And if this is a storage optimized switch, just like the 8325, so this switch can fully support the data center bridging protocols, which provide us the lossless functionality, even in times of congestion. Um, as you can see, we've bundled it into two different bundles. There's R9A, 29A, which is the front to back bundle, and R9A, 30A, which is the um, back to front bundle. Uh, of course, you can see the remaining components, the fan trays and the power supplies listed on the screen. Um, this switch, like I mentioned, does use the full use of that Trident 4 ASIC, so it supports upwards of 1.24 million routes. 
384,000 MAC addresses, 16,000 uh, IPv4 tunnels, and 25,000 ACLs. And of course, it's fully uh, orchestratable with uh, Aruba Fabric Composer. I wanted to go through a few uh, interconnect use cases with this new switch. Uh, 400 gig is gonna be a little different for us. Um, here on this screen, we can see switch A on the left is a 9300, and we're providing an option to connect these 9300s into our top of rack data center switches. So the 8325, the 8360, and the 10K. Um, the one listed at the very top here, number one, this is when we're actually using a single mode fiber optic. This is an EDR4 optic, a 400 gig EDR4 optic, which is plugged into the 9300. And then using optical breakout cables, we're able to break that, that uh, EDR4 into four by 100 gig lanes using the FR1 optic, which is supported on our 8360, 8325, and 10K switches. Um, now there is a multi-mode fiber option. Um, that one's leveraging SR8 uh, as the 400 gig optic. However, that option is only able to split out into two by 100 gig using SR4 optics, which would be plugged into the 8325, 8360, and 10K. And then of course, we've got uh, uh, various uh, active optical cables. Um, and again, these, are, these solutions are gonna be taking that 400 gig port and they're gonna be breaking this, this out using active optical cables into two lanes of 100 gig. And again, these are also fully supported on the 8325, the 8360, and the 10K. In fact, going a little closer look into those uh, three solutions, uh, on the left, we've got the listed the 9300 and their SKUs that are fully supported. And on the right, we've listed the 8000 series switches as well as the 10K that this solution is fully supported in. And then of course, uh, above the optics here, you can see that we're connecting an EDR4 optic and it's connecting use a, using a fiber splitter solution. And then that the, each ends of those fiber slitter, splitter solutions are connecting into the FR100 gig optic. Uh, option number two, uh, very similar, except this is using uh, multi-mode fiber. So this is using uh, the SR8 optic plugged into the 9300. And then on the top of rack switching solution uh, side, we're leveraging uh, SR4 optics for two lanes of 100 gig. And very similar to that last slide, except these aren't using uh, you know, optics per se, these are using uh, active optical cables. So these are single cables. Uh, we can see the various links that these cables come in that provide us this connectivity from a single 400 gig port into two 100 gig lanes. Now we also can't forget about um, you know, connecting this switch into our uh, data center uh, servers uh, and the NICs that they use. So in this slide, we're highlighting the, uh, the 9300 listed on the left as switch A, and then we're listing the uh, optical connections that this switch uh, can be used to connect into, into, our, uh, into our server uh, NIC solutions. Uh, so if we look at number one there, number one is using QSFP28 NICs. And this is a solution where we're using that op active optical breakout cable to break uh, a single 400 gig port out into two by 100 gig. The next two options are actually leveraging QSFP56 NICs. So not QSFP28 NICs, but QSFP56 NICs. The one labeled two here is actually taking a 400 gig uh, connection and it's breaking it out into two by 200 gig connections into the uh, server. And then one on the very bottom is leveraging a 400 gig connection from the 9300 and this optical cable is breaking it out into four by 100 gig uh, lanes. Of course, we're using QSFP56 uh, connections in the servers. Again, taking a, another closer look at these three solutions I just showed you, uh, the NICs on the right that, that's supported in are listed, and of course the switches on the left are listed, and right above uh, them is the uh, various optical, active optical cables that are supported in this solution. Here, we're actually using the QSFP56 NICs now. So now we're using uh, the active optical cables and breaking those out into two lanes of 200 gig for high bandwidth server connectivity. And we can see the, uh, the Mellanox NIC listed on the far right that that's supported in. 
And finally, same, very similar, we're using QSFP56 NICs in the hosts now. And this solution is actually using a QSFP uh, 400 gig active optical cable, which is allowed allows us to break this out into four lanes of 100 gig, leveraging that QSFP 56. And of course, we can see the Mellanox NIC that this is uh, supported in. Uh, again, I wanted to just give you guys an, another list of the supported NICs that uh, this solution leverages. The 100 gig FR ones are the, uh, the ones all in white. And then of course the two bottom ones are the active optical cables uh, using the QSFP56 connections that I just mentioned. Now, when we're connecting these uh, cables into our uh, hosts in the data center or to our, our other switches, um, there's actually uh, an active optical, uh, a fiber optical breakout module. We could see here listed with the number two. This is an MTP adapter panel. And you plug in one of these MTP port breakout modules into that adapter panel, and that allows us to break these optical lanes of 400 gig into four by 100 gig. Uh, we've actually partnered with Corning on this. So here's another kind of view of that exact same solution. We've got a 400 gig optic connecting into a breakout module, which allows us to break that 400 gig lane out into four by 100 gig lanes. So this is breaking that EDR4 optic into four lanes of FR1 for 100 gig connectivity into our either servers or top of rack switches. And then we've got the multi-mode fiber option on the right, which breaks that down into only two lanes of 100 gig. Um, also on the upper right, um, we've partnered with Corning uh, to, to document as best we can the cabling options for this solution. So I'd recommend everybody uh, download this Corning uh, cabling guide for the Aruba QSFP double density uh, and have that in your back pocket uh, and make sure that you're familiar with it. And finally, you know, I want to leave you with, you know, I mean, th this is really an exciting addition to us in the data center market. Um, this really does open a lot of doors into a, a lot larger scale data centers, as well as higher bandwidth data centers. So in this solution here in the, uh, the top row, we're looking at a solution where we're using our uh, 9300 as a spine and leaf, and we're actually connecting into 448 200 gig dual NIC server. So a very high bandwidth data center uh, server farm. Uh, the one below that is allowing us to take these simple 9300s and connect them into upwards of 896 100 gig dual NIC servers, all at a one to one over subscription ratio, mind you. And then finally, the very bottom one, probably one of, gonna be one of the more common solutions uh, until uh, 100 gig and 200 gigs start expanding more in the data center. Uh, but of course you can see we're, we're connecting into 25 gig servers and we're connecting to upwards of 3000 25 gig servers, all using a 9300 spine solution with uh, 83 uh, 25s as our leads. So very exciting. Um, and I hope that was helpful for you. And uh, have a good day.